in some conversations with top leaders of organizations that were going to start on this journey, um, I found myself um, co-designing with them on a flip chart, um, a quite precise image of their future. Um, you know, say how exactly the self-management teams would look like, um, you know, how some of the key processes would look like, some of the key roles, and you know, how do you do performance management and decision making, and we'd spell that out quite in detail uh, on the flip chart. Um, and uh, I know this is not a trick question, but I, I hope that some of you got uncomfortable as I was just sharing that, and some of you said, like, what, Frederick? You were sort of designing in a room the future organization with some leaders? Um, and you're right, you know, I, I absolutely no longer believe that you can and that you should um, design a future organization, you know, on a flip chart. Um, and I certainly don't believe that you should do that sort of in secret with top leaders in, in a room. So, you know, why, why did I find myself doing that? Um, uh, and it was clearly not to design the future organization, right? I, my hope is that, you know, they would never implement what we, you know, designed on the, on the flip chart. And uh, I very much assumed that the reality will turn out to be um, somewhat or quite different than what we spelled out. Uh, the goal of the exercise was really just to create um, a level of comfort, a, a sense of possibility in the future, right? Because self-management and wholeness and, you know, evolutionary purpose with this notion of sense and respond, I mean, these things are are really quite radical and they're, they're really new. I mean, we've, we haven't grown up with these ideas. And so there are some leaders like those I did this exercise with um, who inside are really ready, but they actually have no good sense, you know, no clue of what that future could even look like. And, and that is, you know, making them quite, quite nervous, quite uncomfortable. You know, it's, it's difficult, you know, to uh, sail off with a boat um, you know, towards an unknown land, if you don't even have a sense that there is something there uh, that is waiting for you. And so what this exercise did on the flip, flip chart was simply trying to create that level of comfort of, oh yeah, you know, there is a shore on the other side. You know, there is firm land, you know, and, uh, and often the result of doing that was like, hey, yeah, wow, okay. Yeah, that's actually, that sounds quite doable. I don't know if it will exactly look like this, but yeah, we can do this. Like there's no, uh, you know, this is not rocket science. We we, we could very well operate this way. Um, the trick is, of course, once you design that and have that level of comfort, is not to want to implement it, you know, sort of forget about it and just go into this journey with the sense of comfort that there's a, a shore waiting at the, at the other end. Um, I can give you a practical example. The first time I did this with, with um, a, a hospital and they wanted to uh, introduce you know, teams of self-managing nurses. Um, so take out basically two levels of management, but they felt that they still needed to keep the overall head nurse because it was legally foreseen and because it, you know, uh, you know, it was beyond their imagination of not having that person, but taking out two levels of, of management. And so, you know, we went on that flip chart and we looked at a number of key processes, you know, that need to happen in these teams you know, recruitment and quality control and um, staffing, you know, when in the morning some of the nurses are sick, you know, you know how do you replace them on the teams and, and performance management and all of these things. And then we simply looked at, you know, what, what do we feel the team would need to do and, you know, what might stay with the head nurse. Um, and so we really went into that kind of level of detail and it provided great comfort of, yeah, actually we can do this, there's, there's no reason not to not to do it um, and so I'm just sharing this as an invitation um, as a possible exercise that you can do it and forget to create a level of comfort um, that there's actually something quite feasible on the other side and for that kind of exercise I think um, it can sometimes be interesting to invite somebody uh, with some expertise somebody who knows something around these topics, um, either as a as a coach or as a consultant that has worked with other organizations in this field, or maybe somebody in one of those organizations, um, you know, who's able to work with you, um, because almost by definition, the, the the insights and the skills might be lacking um, inside the team.
But that's not necessarily true. Um, you could also do this, uh, but then much more as a, as a real study exercise of having a number of people really look at, you know, how is Beer Talk organized? How is Favi organized? And, uh, you know, take my book and, and other books and, and look in, in depth and then try to apply that to your own organization. Perhaps you've noticed there is no paywall, no monthly membership to access this video series. That's because the videos live in the gift economy. This is how it works. I gift everything that goes into making the videos, my time, energy, and insights, and you get to choose what feels right to gift back. Please take a moment to reflect on what would feel good to give in return to help me continue doing this work. Thank you.